Hi there, I'm Shawnee Groover, one half of Gypsy Hippie Cloud Productions. And today I will be shooting a video showing um, a playtesting session of a Gypsy, Gypsy Hippie Cloud game called Interrogate. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm going to try and demonstrate how you play the game while we're um, actually going along through one of my normal playtesting sessions with my best buds, Brandon, Nathan, and Jonathan other fellow game designers who are really, really good. So that's what this video is going to be about. So I cordially invite you to learn how to play my game, a Gypsy Hippie Cow production. And Before we get into actual gameplay, let's go over some of the basic equipment you need to play Interrogate. Interrogate is a dice deck type game. You roll dice and these dice help you win cards from the deck. Alright, so here's the deck of interrogate cards. They have pictures and questions on them, and the goal is to answer the questions to win the points on the cards. These are the dice you roll that help you win the cards. You also need red betting chips, and blue betting chips. And you need some form of keeping score. Right now I have some note cards just for you to write your score down. We have our good old set of rules to tell us how to play. And we have a little abbreviated version of really important characteristics. This is your dice ability chart. The dice ability chart is really important because there are lots of different symbols on the dice that have special abilities that activate when you roll the dice and they show up. We're going to talk about the interrogate cards themselves. An interrogate card is broken into four parts. You have the symbol, the picture, the question, and then the combination that you need to roll in order to win the card. The symbol is located at the top of the card. For this card, the symbol is a smiley face. That lets you know that you'll need to be rolling smiley faces in order to correctly answer the question listed onto the card. This card requires three smiley face dots in order to win it. If a player rolls three smiley face dots, they gain 12 points that they add to their personal point account. Smiley face dots look like this right here. So it takes three of those in order to win this card. Some cards will have more than one point combination on them. So that gives you more variety with the rolls you can have that will actually win you the card. On this card, the top symbol is a star. So both of the combinations require stars in order for you to win this card. Combo one requires a red star, two additional stars of any color, so you could roll even another red star, and a silver star. Rolling that combination will net you nine points. Now, if you rolled two stars of any color, two red stars, and a silver star, then you win the combination for 14 points. A player cannot win both combinations. The wiser strategy is to choose the highest combination that gives you the most points. So if you roll two, always go for the one that adds to your personal account. The player at the end of the game with the largest personal account wins. Players are always dealt five cards. Here is important information about setup. In a four player game, each player receives five red betting chips and five blue betting chips. In a five player game, each player receives four red betting chips and four blue betting chips. In a six player game, each player the starting player selects a card from the top of the deck, then proceeds to roll the dice and try and answer that card. After that action, the starting player pulls a card from his or her hand to interrogate the next player. Players must always draw back up to five cards and play proceeds 
You're probably wondering, why do I have a hand of cards anyway? What's the point? Well, at the end of the game, all the points that you have left in your hand, the lowest point value on each card, you subtract that from your personal account. And all those points being taken away at the end could cost you a hand in the game. Here with me, I have Brandon on my left. And I have Nathan on my right. Betting is a good way to increase your personal account, even when you're not the person who's rolling to win the card. In order to place bets, players use betting chips. A player bets red chips if they think that a player will not roll a winning combination. A player bets blue chips if they think that a player will roll a winning combination. Okay, so, in this scenario, Brandon and Nathan are both betting on whether or not a player will be able to roll one natural dot and three additional dots of any type. Brandon is going to bet one red chip because he doesn't think the player can actually roll that dice combination. Nathan is going to bet one blue chip. He thinks the player can roll that combination. Nathan matched Brandon's bet because he played the same chip amount that Brandon played. Now we're going to look at another scenario. We're going to take a look at raising. Brandon bets two red chips. Nathan bets three blue chips. Nathan just raised the bet by adding one more additional chip. So Brandon can choose either to raise the bet again or match Nathan's bet. Let's see what Brandon decides to do. Brandon has decided to match Nathan's bet. Now betting would be closed and then the player would try to roll <laughs> to see if he can win the card. We're going to look at one more scenario. Okay, so Brandon is really, really confident that the player is not going to be able to roll the right combination to answer this question. So Brandon bets six red chips. So Nathan doesn't have six red chips or six blue chips. At this point, he can pick a color and choose to play all the chips of that color to go all in. All right, so Nathan goes all in with four blue chips. Okay, so betting is closed. That means no one can raise any bets or place any more bets. Now, the player is going to attempt to roll and win the card. Okay, so in order to win, the player needed to roll one natural dot plus three dots of any type. Since they only rolled three natural dots instead of one natural dot and three additional dots, they don't win this card. So now we get to divvy up the points the players earn from betting. Brandon bets six chips that the player wouldn't be able to win the card. And he takes those six chips, he multiplies that by two, and that gives him a total of Brandon can write that he had added to his personal account, and his chips simply go back to his own personal chip pile. Nathan bet that the player would be able to roll. The player didn't, so Nathan lost the bet. And the penalty for losing the bet is harsh. Instead of your chips returning back to you, your chips are confiscated and go back to the bank. That means Nathan doesn't have access to these chips in order to bet anymore. If he wanted to place any bets that he agreed with something, he wouldn't be able to do that until he buys his chips back from the bank.
if they're still there. The game is over when there are no more cards left in the deck to draw, or when a player rolls a natural win. Hopefully now you understand a little bit more about the game and how you play it. Continue watching for a preview of my playtesting session. Right, we are getting this 